Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to our Q&A video. We have some awesome topics to discuss, so let's jump right in, shall we? Starting with the first question, what do you think about brands reinventing the classics, like bringing back designs from their archive, such as the Prada Nylon or Dior Saddle? Is that a genius move to revive their famous pieces or just a lazy mindset when they can't bring in a new creative design? Okay, so first and foremost, I do appreciate when creative directors go into the archives and they revive an old style of bag, especially if it was a very popular bag. Uh, they revive it, they add a little bit of a spin to it without changing it too much as a way of honoring the heritage of the fashion house. I think that's absolutely brilliant. However, I also think it can be viewed as both lazy and genius. Now, I know some of you might disagree with me, but just hear me out. The reason why I say it's genius is because just like what I said before, if they do end up uh, reviving an old style of bag that was very, very popular that has since been discontinued and they add a little bit of a change to it without getting too drastic and let's say before it was introduced in only one or two colors and now they end up releasing it in 10 different colors, that's gonna do well. It's gonna generate sales, which is always a win-win for the fashion house and everybody's happy. The house is happy, the people are happy, everybody wins, right? So absolutely genius to, to end up doing that. Other times, I think that when you get a brand, when you get a, a creative director new to a fashion house and they have their very first uh, collection come out, sometimes it seems like depending on how that collection is received, it sets the tone for when that creative director decides to go into the archives, whether it's sooner or later into their careers. I could be wrong. I mean, these are just my two cents. And I'm not saying I can do a better job. I can't even imagine how difficult it must be to be a creative director for any of these fashion houses. You're never gonna keep everybody happy. Someone's always gonna have to say something about it, right? People are gonna love it, people are gonna hate it. So uh, I definitely don't think it's an easy job whatsoever. Uh, so if their first collection wasn't received too well and people were like, oh my God, this is not Dior. What is going on? This isn't this this isn't that, then they're like, okay, I'm gonna go into the archives and I gotta do something. I gotta bring it back and I have to change it. Why, hello there. I'm currently editing the video and I just wanted to pop on here very quickly to say that I wouldn't necessarily call it being lazy. I just think that I think it's a lot of pressure on these creative directors and they literally get it from all angles. They get it from the brand, of course, the board of directors, all the way down to consumers. You're trying to keep everybody happy while you're still trying to find your voice and show your creativity uh, as well. So I just think that it's a lot of pressure and maybe, um, maybe it was, maybe their first show was underwhelming and because of that, that's why they decided to go into the archives a little bit sooner into their careers, as I mentioned previously. So that could be the reason, but I definitely don't think it's being lazy. But you know, again, these are these are just my assumptions. And uh, sometimes it seems like the creative directors try to reinvent the wheel so much that they lose sight of what they're doing. Like you can take a very simple bag and you add so many things to it or you take away so much that it looks like a completely different bag to the point when you reintroduce it, people are like, what is this? This is not the bag that I remember. This is not the bag that I loved or what have you. It doesn't even have to be a popular bag. You know what I mean? So it can be, <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's, it's gotta be, it's difficult to navigate for sure. So my hat's off to creative directors because you're, you're never going to win. And uh, at the same time, sometimes these fashion houses are so stuck in their ways that you need a creative director that is like a fresh coat of paint, someone that's going to spruce things up and just bring eyeballs to your brand or bring people into the store because they're curious. If people are saying bad things about it, if they're saying good things about it, at the end of the day, they're talking about it. And those people that are curious are going to go into your boutique and sometimes that's how you end up catching <laughs> that's how you end up catching and generating sales as well because people are like oh it's not what i thought it was going to be so i don't know i think uh, i think it's crazy <laughs> i definitely think it's crazy uh but yeah when they end up adding so much to it i'm just like oh man come on what are you doing what's going on it's a little too out there um but other times like i said when they do end up just kind of honoring the fashion house and oh this this um this 
handbag was really popular in 1950 because of X, Y, and Z, and it has so much history. I absolutely love that. And sometimes when they do go into the archives and uh, they have their new collections, it's so wonderful to see those fresh, you know, like that fresh coat of paint that you're just like, oh, this is really nice. This is a different style without being too out there, you know. So it's um, it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely a little bit of both. And personally, I do like. I know that this is a little bit off topic, but I do like when I see a new creative director come in and after a few seasons, you start to really see their their uh, personality come through. You can see the the fashion house that they're representing and then you can also see their uh, their personality and they mesh them so well together that I think it's uh, I think it's absolutely amazing. So, I don't know, but either way, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic when creative directors or when brands go into the archives. Do you think that that it's lazy or do you think that it's genius? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, what are your top underrated luxury bags right now? I actually have one and that is the Lueve Puzzle Bag. Whether you end up going for the medium, the small, the mini, the nano, it doesn't matter. In general, the puzzle bag for me is the most underrated luxury bag on the market right now. And I am such a huge fan. I was a fan of this bag before I even got it. And I can understand why people are turned off by it, especially because it is a little bit funky. It is a little bit quirky. It doesn't look like the majority of bags out there. So I completely understand that aspect. Uh, but I think that the leather and the craftsmanship is out of this world. This bag is such a joy to use. It is very comfortable. This small is very spacious. And the leather, you can feel the softness, but you can also feel the durability, which I think is wonderful. There are no, I mean, with this one, I don't have any pop stitches. I don't have anything like that. Uh, it's been wearing fabulously. And I will go as far as saying that I think that the quality is superior to some of the higher luxury fashion houses out there. Uh, I know that the big three, Hermes, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton, those obviously get the most, um, those get the most eyeballs. Uh, but this one, it just, I just don't think it gets the love that it deserves. They are, they're just incredible, incredible bags. And uh, I've said it before that I can see myself uh, even going for a medium. I, if I can have one of these bags in every single size, I would totally do it. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely trying to refrain from that, but uh, it's just, it's such a great bag. I also don't want to sound like I'm trying to shove it down people's throats either. Uh, sometimes I feel like I sound like uh, what I thought people were talking about the Gucci Prince down loafers. Remember how I was like, everyone's like, oh my God, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, blah, 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 blah. And I heard it for so many years, I was like, ugh, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to look at it. And then I finally, <laughs> I finally bought them all. And I'm like, oh, I get it. I feel like that's what's going to happen with the Lueve puzzle bag. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, the only thing is that it doesn't hold its resale value as well as the big three. So, um, and that's the majority for the other fashion houses or the other luxury fashion houses as well. Those three end up holding their resale value, um, insanely well compared to uh, to something like this but either way the craftsmanship the just the way that it looks it sticks out like a sore thumb i know you guys have heard me say that a million times but it sticks out in the best possible way so i love it i think it's amazing and um I'm, cr I'm crazy about it. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm absolutely crazy. The only thing I'm not crazy about is the strap that it comes with. I was using it the other day and I almost threw that strap <laughs> I almost threw that strap on the ground. I'm like, uh, it is so frustrating. But <laughs> anyways, that's neither here nor there. But I am curious, what about you guys? What do you think is the most underrated luxury bag on the market right now? Let me know in the comment section down below. Next question. When Louis Vuitton claims price increases are due to changes in production costs, raw materials, transportation, as well as inflation, what do you think about the mini pochette accessoires co costing 410 in 2017 and 1,080 in 2022, a 150% increase, while a passport cover was 440 and is now 500, a 15% increase? Hmm. Okay, so yes, of course, everything is going up. Production, uh, supplies, everything, labor, everything is going up, right? Not just in the luxury sector, absolutely everything has gone up. However, all right, I've said this, I've said this a million times before, I still think it, I mean, maybe I'm nuts, I don't know. 
I think with this particular, in this particular um, situation, it absolutely comes down to uh, supply and demand. I think that the mini push accessoire is such a popular item. And at first it was relatively inexpensive or it was affordable compared to other items within the fashion house or with other fashion houses in general that uh, now they're like, okay, everybody wants it. Now we're going to release them and we have created such a frenzy that we're gonna have this crazy price point attached to it and it's still gonna sell. That, that's what I think. I still think it comes down to supply and demand, kind of like what I've said with the, uh, what's it called? With the, um, why can't I think? Why can't I think? With the pre-love <laughs> with the pre -love market. I think it's the exact same thing. So now Louis Vuitton is thinking, okay, if the pre-love market is selling it for 800, 900, 1,000, I've seen the mini pochette for like 2,200 on some website. I was like, this is nuts. Now they're like, okay, we're gonna charge 1,080, but now you're gonna be able to get it because it's been out of stock for so long. I still think it's supply and demand, all right? Because people aren't out there losing their minds trying to get the passport cover uh, like they are with the mini pochette. Absolutely not. So I don't know, call me crazy. These are just my two cents. That's what I think. It's just they, they wanna make more money and they're gonna, they're gonna sell. They are going to sell. Price increases, people complain about them, but at the end of the day, they still keep making sales like crazy. I've heard sales associates <laughs> say that they, ha they make their, uh, their quarter sales are better after an increase. What does that tell you? You know what I mean? So anywho, I digress, but I would love to know what you guys think on this topic on the comment section down below. The next question, I had two people ask about the same bag, so I put their questions together. How often do you use your Gucci Affidia medium tote bag? Do you still love it? Can you make a video about the wear and tear, please? I know you had your organizer specifically made for your tote. Is that something Samorga regularly does for their clients or do they do that to you as a favor? Okay, so I did bring out the Gucci Ophidia medium tote bag or denim tote bag for a little bit more eye candy. Uh, do uh, How often do I use this bag? Often, do I still love this bag? Absolutely. And funny thing is that I honestly thought that this was going to be a short-term love. I thought I was gonna fall out of love with it within a couple of months or maybe like six, seven months at most. That has not been the case. I absolutely love this bag. I love the size, the fact that it's a tote, the colors, how spacious it is. It is insane, super, super comfortable. As far as wear and tear goes, uh, I, I have personally haven't had any issues with the corner wear. I know people have mentioned that they've had issues with their corners. I have not, and I have to tell you, I am not careful with this bag whatsoever. So no issues on the corners, no issues on any of the leather whatsoever, or even on the trim up here, nothing. The only thing I have noticed is that these GGs are not as bright and as vibrant as they were um, when I first got it. So it, it feels, it seems like it's definitely aged. Uh, the denim seems the same, but these guys, they almost look a little bit, and I hate to say this word, but they look a little bit dingy. So <laughs> there's that. And plus the fact that it is the denim, uh, you have a little bit of like fuzziness going on throughout the bag. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see it on camera. If I hold it up, you're going to be like, dude, what am I looking at? Um, it's, there's a little bit, oh, right here. So there's a little bit of fuzziness right there, a little bit of pilling. Uh, not too, too bad, but it is a fabric material. Uh, I know Theo ended up, uh, licking it, which I didn't, I did not, I did not end up cleaning that off, but right there. So <laughs> that's awesome. Right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, am I turning red? I feel like, I feel like I'm turning red. Uh, but anywho, whew. um, yeah, so it's the, the denim, the light part of the denim looks pretty dingy. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go and say that. Uh, but I still love the bag. I still think it's amazing. Uh, very, very comfortable. And I love these straps. I get a lot of questions if uh, these straps end up falling off of my shoulder. 
I personally do not, uh, I, do, I have not experienced that. Now, as far as the organizer, because uh, as um, as I mentioned, uh, Samoria did end up uh, custom making this for me. Uh, and I have heard that they have done that for people in the past, which I think is amazing. If you email them or if you hit them up on uh, on Instagram, uh, they might take a little bit to, to get back just because I know that they get so many different DMs and so many different emails. Uh, but if you email them and you say, hey, um, I want this, you know, I want this specifically for this bag and they've made organizers for, for bags that they don't, um, that they personally don't have either. So I think it's really wonderful. Um, I think that, I think that they're amazing. I absolutely love Samorga and, um, I am very, very grateful that they were able to custom make this organizer for me uh, because I definitely think it's a game changer. This denim, as beautiful as it is without it, let me just show you guys. Um, and because of the organizer, the inside looks pristine. So there's that, right? That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty much what ends up happening. It just kind of I don't really, I don't really like that. It turns into that beautiful mess that I'm not a fan of. So the organizer has been an absolute game changer. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do like a whole month of organize or of, uh, organizer videos of, um, uh, wear and tear videos because there are bags that, um, I want to be able to share the wear and tear that I've experienced. So I think one of these months I'm just going to do just wear and tear videos. That's it. That's all you're going to see from me. <laughs> I don't know, but, um, yeah, still love this bag. Still going strong. Do I see it as a forever bag? I don't know. I don't know, but, um, yeah. I think, I think it's awesome. Absolutely amazing. Next question. I was wondering if you still have your Louis Vuitton bum bag and if so, how do you store it? Mine will be arriving soon and I'm debating on if I should get an organizer to help keep it shape when not in use or if the air paper is still sufficient. Also, what are your thoughts on it being discontinued? Okay, so I did bring it up. So we have a little bit more eye candy uh, and I didn't clean it out just so you can see exactly how I end up storing it. I do have an organizer for this bum bag. Uh, so even though I have an organizer, I still end up using the air paper just because I want the air paper to keep this part up uh, because the organizer only pretty much focuses on this part of the bum bag. So by having it like this uh, with the air paper, it keeps this from caving in. Uh, so um, I definitely I definitely prefer to store it this way. So whether you, you just wanna use the air paper, you can do that as well. But I can say that the organizer has been great to help once again keep this part um, keep the shape of it so I think that's I think that's amazing but uh, this is the one that I got I can't remember the color I think it's just emerald uh, but it's a it's a beautiful color and uh, it's awesome I don't really use these pockets again I just end up using most of the organizers to help them keep their shape but there it is the inside the interior looks like it's in pristine condition because of that so kind of like with the Gucci Ophidia denim tote bag. Uh, but this bag, how long have I had it now? I think I've had it, what, two, two years, three years now? Still going strong, still absolutely love this bag. And the patina uh, or the uh, the leather has completely, uh, complete la, comple <laughs> completely patinaed. My gosh, why, why am I struggling? It has completely patinaed and I love this color. That, that honey golden color is absolutely beautiful. I'm not careful with this bag either. Uh, you can really see the patina Tina on here. So that's awesome. All right. So major congratulations on getting yours. You're going to love that bag. It is amazing. Super, super comfortable. Honestly, it's one of the best shoulder bags that I have. And I know that it's a bum bag, but as a shoulder bag, it is amazing. Now, as far as how I feel about it being discontinued, why? Why, why, why are they being discontinued? Then again, we go back to the very beginning. They end up discontinuing a lot of these popular bags. Then they end up revamping them and reintroducing them for like $4,000 with all of these chains. What if they end up incorporating this with a detachable strap? I have a feeling that that's what they're gonna end up doing. It's gonna be a detachable strap. Hopefully it's not that fabric strap that they're obsessed with, uh, but I think it might be detachable. I really do. I think it's going to be removable and they're going to end up charging like three grand for it. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but maybe that's what they're doing or maybe they're going to revamp it and they're going to introduce it in the Damia Ben or even the Damia Zor. I think that this bag would look amazing in those two prints as well. Uh, but I, uh, I heard about them discontinuing it last week and I was like, why? I just threw my hands up and I'm like, of course, of course they would. It's popular. 
why not? Next question, what do you think is the most beautiful bag you own? Also, which bag is the most special to you? All right, so the most beautiful bag that I think I have within my collection is the beautiful Prada Crystal Re-Edition in the color white. I am obsessed with this bag. I love the black, don't get me wrong. I love the black, but the white, there is definitely something about it. I was actually using it the other day, and whether I'm indoors or outdoors, it doesn't matter. It just sparkles like crazy. I really wish that I can capture the sparkles uh, on camera, because I can never ever do that. I have to go outside to really, to show it. Uh, but, uh, here like in real life it's it's sparkling like crazy and i think i think it's awesome i think it's absolutely amazing every time i use this bag the magpie in me is like screaming at the top of her lungs being like ah oh my god like <laughs> i literally lose it whenever i use this bag i know that might sound nuts but i i, I really do it just it just makes me smile from ear to ear every time that i use it um i haven't had any issues with the with the handle I'm not going to put a twilly or anything like that on, on here either. I just want it to look pretty much like so. But no issues with the corners, no issues with the stones, um, on either one of them, really. Uh, so that's that's been amazing. I am mindful. I had someone ask me on Instagram the other day um, how, you know, how, if I'm super, super careful or, you know, how I end up wearing it and stuff like that. Uh, I am mindful when I do wear denim because obviously I wear denim pretty much every single day. Um, but I'm not like crazy careful either because like you guys know I'm not into baby in bags anymore I'm into enjoying them and that's exactly what I'm doing with this bag uh, and so far so far so good so that's pretty amazing as far as the bag that is the most special to me absolutely hands down without a doubt uh, the coach bag that my dad got me for sure many many moons ago when he uh, when he bought that for me uh, and uh, that's that's definitely one of my forever pieces. I also did a video on that uh, a few years ago But the reason why it's it's so incredibly special is because at the time it was a bag It was an item that was incredibly expensive for our household So for my dad to indulge me in a bag that I really that I really liked for him to to do that was absolutely amazing. So that, that bag will be with me until the end of all time. So uh, I absolutely love that bag. And of course I'm getting choked up just thinking about it, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna start crying or what have you, but it would definitely have to be the Coach Demi, what was it, the Demi, um, was it the Demi Pochette or the Demi Pouch in that pink uh, that, you guys have, uh, that you guys have seen before. So definitely that one. But I would love to know, what do you guys think is the most beautiful bag within your collection? And what is the bag that is most special to you in your collection as well? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. I have my eyes on getting a Louis Vuitton and Damia Azur, and I wanted to know what has been your experience with its wear and tear. All right, so I did bring out a couple different pieces to share with you guys, but I am a huge fan of Damia Azur. I think it is a beautiful, beautiful print, especially once the leather starts to patina and you have that honey golden color paired with the Damia Azur. I think it makes for a fabulous combination, especially for spring and summer. I think it looks amazing. Uh, now, Damia Azur, as beautiful as it is, it is prone to color transfer and it's also prone to yellowing. So it's something that you have to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, I did bring out the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM and the Damien Azor. I've had this bag for what seems like a hundred million years. And about five years ago, I experienced color transfer for the very first time. I had a total space cadet moment. I was out shopping and uh, I was wearing a, a new black top. And, you know, I just threw this bag on my shoulder, not even thinking twice about it. Uh, I went into the restroom and I noticed that there was a dark shadow on this side of the bag. Uh, and... <laughs> Right then and there in the in the restroom, I grabbed the the soap. I tried to I like clean it off as best as I could, and I was able to get the majority of the uh, of the color off. And then once I got home, I got the Dawn liquid dish soap, and I was able to remove uh, to remove the other the other part. There's still a tiny little bit of like a um, of a hue of like a dark shadow on here. I don't think you guys are going to be able to tell uh, on camera, but in real life, you would you would be able to see the difference. I mean, I can, I can see it here. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, not too, too noticeable, but still, I know that it's there. Uh, so again, it's just one of those things that you have to be mindful. If you do wear a lot of dark colored clothing, it really depends on the bag as well. If it's a bag that you're going to use crossbody, and if you wear a lot of denim, just know that with, uh, when you end up using that bag crossbody or when you put it on your shoulder, and if you're wearing those dark, uh, those dark uh, colors with the movement that you're creating when you're walking, there is a chance that you can end up getting color transfer on it. 
So um, I still love this bag. This is actually my favorite Neverfull, especially because it got the color transfer. Uh, I just think, um, I don't know, it just always reminds me of how I got in the whole story comes to mind. So um, I love this bag. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And uh, the other one that I brought out is the Speedy 30. This is in the classic. I've also had this bag uh, for quite some time. Now this one, I haven't had any type of color transfer and I really think that it's because it is a hand carry bag. I don't use this bag on my shoulder, obviously. I don't end up uh, adding a chain to it either. So I just end up hand carrying it so I haven't had any issues with it rubbing on my jeans or on my tops or anything like that. However, it has definitely definitely yellowed as time has gone by. And with the uh, with the Damia Azor, the reason why it yellows is because it does come into contact uh, with the sun. It doesn't even have to be direct sunlight. Just if you end up using the bag, if you're out and about uh, over time and you know through the years, it just starts to develop a little bit more of a yellow tint to it. And I am very careful when I store my bags. I put them all in their dust bags. They're behind <laughs> they're behind curtains, and I have curtains and shutters in this room and still I end up getting, uh, I end up having this yellow over time. So it's just one of those things, again, that you have to keep in the back of your mind. This one has definitely yellowed. You can see it whenever it's on a really white surface, kind of like the background, and I have this bag there, you can see that it looks a little bit more yellow. Um, and uh, even these two side by side, this one's a little bit more yellow than this one. And the prints are always going to vary because they do end up using different rolls of the canvas. So no two pieces might be exactly the same. That's why sometimes with Louis Vuitton monogram canvas, you end up seeing that the, um, that the monogram might look a little bit more green or it might have a little bit more of a caramel color to it as well. And the last thing that I wanted to show you guys, I know that I'm <laughs> kind of uh, talking your ear off, uh, is the small leather goods. If you decide to go for small leather goods, these are also very prone to color transfer, especially when they are in the Damien Ben uh, type of bags or any type of suede. Uh, anything that might have a little bit more dye in it, um, they can end up releasing those dyes and they end up getting on your items like so. So I have it on the corners there and I have it um, all throughout here. I think it was probably, uh, what was it? I've been on YouTube how many years? It seems like a million years, right? <laughs> I think it was like the second year that I was on YouTube. Um, at the time, I had the Speedy 35 Damia Ben, and uh, it was the classic. And for some reason or another, I had all of my Damia Azor pieces, and I didn't want to switch my, my small other goods, and I threw all my Damia Azor small other goods inside of my Damia Ben, and I went about my day. At the end of the day, I was taking my items out, and my wallet uh, ended up, uh, the corners ended up turning pink. So obviously you have the white, the red, it ended up turning pink. So that's just something, again, to keep in the back of your mind. But even with that said, I still think it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful print. I really wish that Louis Vuitton would introduce more bags, uh, more pieces in this print just because it is gorgeous, but it is a little bit, I wouldn't say delicate, but it's just something that you have to keep in the back of your mind just in case. Like with these, they have color transfer, they have yellowed, and I still love them to pieces. The Speedy and the Neverfull are two of my forever pieces that I would never get rid of. So that just goes to show. <laughs> I think it gives it a little bit more of a special, I don't know, it makes it a little bit more special because no other bag would have color transfer the way that you, the, the way that yours does. You know, it's just a matter of enjoying the bag. So I don't know if this was helpful or not, but I say go for it. Next question, which bags in your collection have the worst wear and tear and which have worn the best? Any surprise you expecting them to wear better or worse? Uh, I'd honestly have to say that 99.9% .9 of the handbags that I have within my collection have worn really well, but I honestly think that it's because I do rotate them often, sometimes daily, sometimes every other, uh, every other day or every other week. I don't use the same bag for years at a time. I think if that was the case, it would be completely different, but seeing as how I do get a little bit stir crazy and I do like to switch them out every single day. I, I think, again, that's why, um, that's why they have worn the way that they have. So none of them have really surprised me. I do love the fact that at the top of that list, I would have to say are the, uh, it's the, uh, the Givenchy Antigona as well as the Celine Nano Luggage Tote. Again, not that it surprised me because you can really feel the quality and the durability of the leather. I think it's amazing. I talked about that on my mini handbag collection video uh, last week, uh, but yeah, those guys are still going strong. I mean, they look like the day that I got them. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, now, as far as one that has worn the worst, hands down, 
this guy. <laughs> the, uh, the Chanel Vanity in the Black Lambskin with the Aged Gold Hardware. Um, this bag, I mean, in the short amount of time that I've had it, it definitely surprised me. I thought it would end up wearing better, especially because I do have other lambskin pieces and those have worn fabulously. But this guy is like, this to me does not, this does not look like Chanel to me. It, it definitely doesn't. I mean, with the pop stitches, uh, with the corners, uh, the way that, that it has it here on the zipper, I mean, it's just, it, it no. <laughs> so this one absolutely surprised me. Definitely the one that has worn the worst, either in a short amount of time or long, it doesn't matter. How, however long I've had this bag, it has not aged gracefully whatsoever. But I honestly think it goes back to the way it was made. It was not um, quality control. Definitely let this bad boy slip. So it's definitely a bummer. I think it's adorable. And it's, it's. I mean, it fits my phone in here. It's a great little bag, uh, but just the silhouette, the style that it has, uh, it just, I think it's prone to wearing not the best. <laughs> it's not the, it doesn't have that whole, you know, longevity factor as far as it wearing fabulously for extended periods of time. I personally don't think so. Some people might, ex might have experienced something different and that's amazing. Uh, but just this one in particular has not worn well for me by any means whatsoever. So it was definitely, definitely a bummer. I did end up getting that yellow one that's in the caviar leather and it doesn't have the top handle. So it's, um, it's, it's definitely better. It's definitely better. So that one surprised me for sure. Next question. Do you have any other Gucci bags on your radar? If so, which ones? What do you think are great first starter bag buys from Gucci? I'm thinking of either the Ophidia GG small shoulder bag or a pre-loved Gucci B tote bag from Fashion File. Um, all right. So I do have a couple Gucci bags that are on my radar, not necessarily bags that are on the wish list. Um, but the first is of course the, uh, the Marmont without the hideous heart on the backside. I know you guys heard me talk about this a couple of minutes Mondays ago, uh, but I love it in the gray, especially because it does have the silver hardware. I think it looks fabulous. Um, so I do love that. And I also love the Jackie. Now the Jackie, I've always been a fan of it, especially, um, especially since they revamped it as well. I like the, the variety of different textures and colors that you can go for. I personally like it in the leather in either the red or the, the pink. And I also absolutely love it in the denim. I think it looks fabulous. The blue denim. I think the blue denim looks absolutely fabulous. So those two, I'm kind of like side eyeing. I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, I think that they're gorgeous. Now, as far as starter bag, uh, starter bags from Gucci, I think they have so many, so many to pick from. Uh, I know that a lot of people rave about the uh, the Soho Disco. They love the ease of carrying that bag. It doesn't break the bank either. And a lot of people had said have said that the quality is absolutely amazing. So that's a really great bag as well. Another one is of course the regular Marmont. If you want to go for the super mini. So again, if you want to get a feel for the brand without necessarily breaking the bank, and if you want to try a different color as well, you can go for that one because I still think it's a super, super cute bag. I love the size. It's not like this itty bitty bag either. Uh, it is a little bit, uh, I mean, you can end up maximizing your space in that bag as well. So I love that. And just like you mentioned, the Aphidia Small GG Shoulder Bag, I think is a great option as well. It comes in at what, 1500 bucks and you have a couple different colors that you can go for. I absolutely love that. Another one that I really love like. Um, I haven't seen it in person, but it's the Aphidia Mini GG bag. I think it's the GG bag. It comes in at $920 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I think that bag is so, so cute. And I really like it with the new, uh, with the new canvas that they have, uh, just because you have the blue and the silver hardware versus the red and green webbing with the gold hardware. So I think that looks amazing. So like I said, I think that there are so many different options when it comes to, a uh, to Gucci that you really can't go wrong. I am definitely a fan of Gucci and I'm so happy that they have revamped the quality of their items from where it was maybe 15 years ago because it's definitely not the same. It is infinitely better now. And the last question, can you show us the wear and tear on the Speedy 25 bandolier, please? Absolutely, so I did bring it out. Let's start off with the strap because I do end up storing the strap separate from the bag. Okay, so on here, as far as wear and tear goes, the only thing that I have going on on the strap 
is some good looking patina. Oh yeah, it has definitely changed to that honey golden color, uh, but I don't have any pop stitches. I don't have any chipping hardware or anything like that. I barely have any type of hairline scratches on the, uh, on the hardware itself. But yeah, absolutely no issues, nothing out of place when it comes to the strap. As far as the bag itself, um, I always like to check the corners. I don't have, it's, it's been wearing awesome as well. I do have some, I do have some uh, water stains on that little tab right there as well as uh, right there. But other than that, it also has the, that uh, honey golden color. Uh, so I don't have any funky corners. Let me show you guys that one. The trim around it is still um, looking, looking pretty good. There we go. So yeah, I don't have any issues, any type of pop stitches on this either. No weird threading, um, nothing like that. It's still absolutely going strong. There we go. You can see a little bit of, um, this is just the, the veining from the leather right there. It looks a little bit more noticeable just because it has, uh, it does have that patina, but yeah, it's, it's still in great condition and the interior, um, looks great as well. I, pr I currently have it stuffed and it also has an organizer in there. Uh, but yeah, it is still going strong. No issues with wear and tear. I did also end up removing the lock on here. I just think it makes it a lot easier. I mostly end up removing the lock off of all of the, the bags that come with the lock. Or if it doesn't come with the lock, you know what I do? I end up adding a lock. What kind of sense does that make? Zero, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, this uh, this bag is still absolutely going strong. I do get questions on if I end up using anything on the leather. Do I end up protecting it? Do I end up uh, doing anything to, to speed up the patina process? I don't. I don't treat any of my handbags, be it Louis Vuitton Chanel or anything like that. I just think that the oils in my hands do all the work for me. Um, but um, yeah, so I personally just like to have that that honey golden color on there. So that is the wear and tear on the Speedy and I think I've had it for five years? I think five years. Yeah. So I've had it a while considering I hated that bag, right? I know I always talk about it. Uh, now I all, I also wanted to address a couple things. I had someone ask if this is a screen in the back. It is not a screen. I promise you, look, <laughs> it is just the way I always like to set up my videos. And I get a lot of questions on this green bag. Um, I actually got it, uh, what's it been like, maybe now a month. Um, but this, I got it on the Coach Outlet. I will put a link on the description box below if you guys wanna check it out. It is called the Penny 25 in the green leather. And it is absolutely adorable. It also comes with a removable adjustable strap. Uh, I paid 175 bucks for this bag. Heck yeah. Uh, the one thing that I do want to point out is that it does have two different types of, of threading. Uh, you have the light lime green on here, and then you have the regular green that matches the bag up here. A little bit funky, but I love the silver hardware. Uh, I love the color. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I did end up unboxing it on a previous Minx Monday. And when you guys saw that unboxing, it was really, really wrinkled. I have stuffed the bag and uh, the wrinkles have definitely toned down a little bit. But let me show you guys the interior. But it was funny when someone said that has to be a screen behind you. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> There's the, the interior. Check that out. It is so spacious. You have one little slip pocket there. It is an adorable little bag, especially because I wanted another green bag and I didn't want something that was like enormous. So this was perfect. But the leather feels amazing. Absolutely love the Coach Penny 25. And look at the detailing on that hardware. Absolutely fabulous. So again, I also wanted to, to talk about this bag a little bit because I do get a lot of questions on it. But that does it for our MMQA. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope I was able to answer your questions. I think this is going to be a little bit of a longer one. <laughs> of a longer one. Are you guys enjoying the longer MMQIs? Yeah, are you guys enjoying the MMQIs? Are you enjoying the longer MMQAs? If you are, let me know in the comment section down below if you guys want me to scale them back to like under 30 minutes let me know as well uh, because you know 
you know I can talk about bags forever in a day. So <laughs> just let me know if it's like, okay, you need to, you need to stop. You need to, you need to bring them back down to earth because, <laughs> because I know that these feel like, I don't know, like a novel or something. But either way, I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day. Want to say hi? Hmm? Huh, lover? Huh, lover? Mm. I love you. I love you. You want to say hi? <laughs> no. Theo.